So I have a Dell Inspiron 7786, which is about two years old. And when I ran the test to see whether or not I could get the upgrade to Windows 11, I was very surprised and it said, no, no TPM2 chip. That was disappointing. But I don't give up that easy. So I've done some research. And Dell actually doesn't have a TPM chip in a Dell. It's called something different. In order to set your Dell up, if it's fairly new and it comes up and tells you there's no TPM chip, don't give up. Go into the BIOS. And for me to get into the BIOS, I had to hit the F2 key repeatedly as soon as I rebooted the system. And then it went into the BIOS. Once you get to the BIOS, in the Dell, you're looking for something that's called PTT, Platform Trusted Technology. It's the same as TPM. It is still the trusted technology. Needless to say, this was turned off. I ran into one other problem. In the BIOS settings under Advanced Boot Options, the Enable Legacy Option ROMs was turned on. If that's turned on, as it states here, if Legacy Option ROM can't be enabled if you want PTT to work. So make sure that the Legacy Option ROM is unchecked. If that's checked, it won't work. This needs to be unchecked, as you see in this photo here. Once this is unchecked, then you can go down to PTT Security under the Security setting, and you can now turn on PTT. Turn it on. Once it's on, save your setting and reboot the system. After the system got rebooted, Surprise, surprise, that computer is now fully ready to run Windows 11. It is compatible. And actually, that computer right now is in the process of updating to the preview release of Windows 11. Stay safe, be free. I hope this helps. Yeah. And what we are teaching today is some, some more tips about smartphone photography. I'm going to focus today on, on the portrait mode and a little bit on taking video. We tend to forget about video. I'm going to be using an Apple phone, an Android phone, and Google Photos because it works on both. And in case you haven't seen us before, I'm Chris. <laughs> and I'm Jim. <laughs> And we are geeks on tour, and we can prove it because we wear these silly hats. You know, another word for a geek is a propeller head, and we tend to be propeller heads. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We've been in this a long time, so. If you see our wedding photos, we wore hats like these in our wedding photos yeah. because we are geeks. Okay. All right. So, and we tour, we do a lot of traveling, so we call ourselves Geeks on Tour, and that is our website, geeksontour.com. Everything we do is there, including a page that includes all the slides and the video for the last time we were here. All you would do is go to geeksontour.com slash classes and scroll down until you see December 5, 2022, or you could go to it on the Tech for Senior YouTube playlist of these and find December 5, 2022. We also did smartphone photography tips there, but they were different tips. We did clean the lens, picking lenses, live and motion photos, love them, panoramas, removing reflection, and night mode, computational photography. Today, we're going to do portrait photos. I think I will get a chance to show you Magic Eraser and some tips about both taking and editing videos. I asked earlier, and I was not at all surprised that half of you are using iPhones. I am a little surprised that of the Android users, 
it was only half Samsung. I have an iPhone SE, just a little. I don't have any of the fancy iPhone. I have a fairly fancy Samsung S21 Ultra. And if I ever need to know a question about Pixel... I have a Pixel 7 Pro. Yeah, I, I'll bet you that most of the Android other of you were our Pixels. Okay, I have... I always have more material than I have time, but I love answering questions. So put them in the chat and we will absolutely be able to get to them in the Q&A afterwards. Or if I see one that looks important to answer right now, I will do that. Portrait photos. I just, I want to encourage people to use that portrait mode. It makes such a more professional looking picture of people what it does primarily is blur the background. This is something that digital SLR cameras have done in all, all the time because of their depth of field settings. But the camera just has a button. And let me show you where that is. On the Samsung, I'll lift it up a little uh -oh. bit here, huh? I think I dot killed it again. Oh, okay. There, on the on the iPhone, it's very easy to spot because if you're in the camera, portrait is right there. All you do is tap on portrait. You are now using the portrait mode. On the Samsung, I'm pretty sure by default, portrait is not here immediately. But if you if you go all the way over to more, then you see them all. And if like me, you like to use portrait a lot, you can just tap this little plus and then move portrait down to the main row and save. Now, when you're in the camera, portrait is right there. And I have a couple of very short videos to show you about using the portrait mode. Numbers. When taking pictures of people with your iPhone, don't settle for just a regular photo. Try the portrait mode. It'll give you a professional looking blurred background. And you can even use these different lighting options. Just rub your finger on the screen and you might see this dramatic effect called stage light. So here is the regular photo. Here is the portrait with the blurred background. And here is the stage light. Why take a regular picture when you can take a professional looking portrait with a blurred background? This is my Samsung S21. And instead of just photo, you click on portrait and that blurs the background. You can take a picture. You can also choose these lighting options to and the most dramatic one is this one called Backdrop, which removes the background completely and replaces it with a color. Unfortunately, you cannot change the color. So here is the regular photo. Here is the portrait photo with the blurred background. And here is the portrait photo with Backdrop. All right, so that is iPhone and Samsung. Pixel also just has a portrait and it does the same thing. I cannot find on the Pixel any of the background lighting options, maybe with the next, with the next version. But then I also want to show you, what if you say, oh, I really like that blurred background, but I took a picture years ago, didn't know about it, or it was before smartphone photography. What, is there anything I can do? Yes, Google Photos can edit a picture and blur the background. So I want to show you that. I'm going to use the Samsung, but this works exactly the same on the iPhone. It is Google Photos. So I just open up Google Photos and I find a photo that I want to blur the background. So I just think this is such a nice picture of me and Jim on the beach. I want to make it a better photo a with a blurred background. Anybody else see another problem with this photo though? What's with this 
person's head coming you don't out want of those Jim's people shoulder. there. What? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want those people there. I don't want those people there. So before I do the blur background, I'm going to use the new fancy feature called Magic Eraser. You just tap on Edit, and you might see Magic Eraser right away. That's if Google Photos has already noticed something that could be erased. If it doesn't, you should definitely find it under the Tools menu. And there is Magic Eraser. Notice also the multicolored one next to these options. What that means is these won't work for you if you are on the free, the 100% free 15 gigabyte limit Google Photos. If you are paying even the basic amount, which is $20 a year, then you have the ability to use these features. I think it's well worth it. So I tap on Magic Eraser and it analyzes the photo and it comes up with her. It wants to take her out of Jim's shoulder, but I say, no, I also want him. So I can just rub over him and notice I don't have to be exact. It highlighted just the exact person. And then I want to get what it did highlight, erase all, much better. Now, I want a portrait blur. So, and it's called that, portrait blur. I tap that and it blurs the background. I can drag the slider to make it blur more or less and I'm done. And I save a copy. So this will not let you overwrite your original. So when you're done, you now have two photos of me and Jim on the beach, one with a blurred background and no extra people and one with that is the original. All right. And so that works both on Apple and on Android as long as you're using Google Photos. Now there's one way cool thing that is Apple only. So and Apple only meaning you have to be using the Apple Photos app and it will grab a person and actually rip it out of the photo, completely eliminating the background. So let me show you what I mean. I have this photo. Let's try that one. If I, you know, so the background there is crooked and it's messy. I just want my face. If you touch and hold, notice, did, did you see that kind of like a lightning, a light that goes around and now I am attached to my finger. Can you, can you see that below my finger? It has separated me from the rest of the picture. Is that trippy or what? And it is just so easy. And if I leave it alone for a minute, it starts giving you this outline of what it has. And if I just tap share and then scroll down to save image, I now have that image of just me without the background. Now, so far, there are no tools in Apple Photo or Google Photos to put me on top of another background, but you can using things like Canva. I've, I've made some photo, I've taken me out using this iPhone feature and then used that photo to put on top of a background in, in Canva. So I think that is just way cool feature. And just wait, Google Photos, I'm sure will get it. They have already announced something called Magic editing, which I could just move me around in that picture is the example they give. All right. So that's pretty much. So here's uh, just a, a review. In Apple, you could take a portrait photo just by tapping on portrait first. And when you move your finger over on the screen, you get the different lighting options. 
What's demonstrated here is called stage light. On the Samsung, same thing, but if you tap the lighting options button, you get something called backdrop and it takes away all the background and puts in that, that color. Pretty cool. And Google Photos can blur the background even after. And this example, it, just to make sure you understand that your smartphone didn't even have to take the picture. This is a picture of me when I was like 25 years old. Back that was in only a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you must be a Google One subscriber. You open the photo and tap edit. Portrait might appear right away. If not, you tap on the tools button and then blur. And I also added a vignette to this one. And how are we doing on time? I think I'm, I think I'm good. I, I want to show you vignette. So let's, let's say in this, this photo that I'm taking for, we're trying to update our passports, <laughs> but I think this photo could you stand a blur background and then a vignette. You find vignette on the adjustments tab in the editing. And then it's all the way over. Lots of different adjustments you can do. There's vignette and then there's a slider. Yeah. And then save copy. All right. So just all sorts, do not settle for the picture that you took. A couple of editing taps will make a much better picture. All right, now, oh, and here is the mind-blowing magic from iPhone photos. You just touch the person in the photo and it separates from the rest. Now, if it was a live photo, this can be a little bit tricky because the first time you touch and hold, it starts moving, it's live, but just keep keep holding, keep trying. It works on live photos as well as any other. And once it is separated from the photo, you get an option to share or to copy. So you can copy it and then paste it into a text message, for example, or you can share and save. Okay. Now, are you ready for video? Don't forget about video. These phones are excellent video cameras, really excellent video cameras. And I wanna show you how easy it is to take video. No need to select the video mode first. You just hold down on the shutter button. So go like you're going to take a picture but instead of just tapping the shutter button, hold down, it turns into video. And then when you let go, it stops. And then you, if you want it to keep taking video, you can drag it over to a little lock icon and it will stay in video mode. Taking video will enhance your photo experience in your albums or making little movies. So I want a demo. Here's my iPhone. And I'm just going to go into the camera mode and I get ready to take a picture of Jim, right? Just by tapping a little, but I say, oh no, he's doing something here. He's, he's waving. So I want to take video, just hold down. And do you see the red counter start to go at the top? And now when I let go, I'm done. That works exactly the same on Samsung. So I believe you will take more videos if you know how easy it is. Just hold down on the button when you have gone to take a photo. Next, slow motion and fast motion. These are just so much fun. So on the iPhone, once again, I'll show you where it is on the Samsung, works just the same in a minute, but I'll just do it on here. On the iPhone, there is actually a slow-mo option right on the camera. 
And then you have to, and now I want you to shake your head size. No, you have to hold down on it. And, and it is doing very slow motion. I'll show you this in a second. Okay. Okay. And then you let go. And then time lapse is what they call the fast motion. So once again, tell me no. No. No, no, no. <laughs> or tell me yes. Okay. Or wave a little bit. Fine, I'm out of here. Okay. So now I want to show you what those look like. And I'm going into, <laughs> so here is what the slow motion, notice it starts off regular speed for a, for a second. It just has to kind of get adjusted and then it goes into this slow. So look how slow that is. <laughs> okay, and then the fast is very, very fast. Now, why would you use this? I have a couple of samples here. Grandkids are great. To, you need to slow them down, right? <laughs> because they're moving so fast. So here is an example of our grandson a few years ago. And I really like... More than a few years ago. Yeah, I really like <laughs> over at the end when he jumps off yeah, that is great in slow motion. And the other sample to show you is a gym working. Now, us old folks, we need to be speeded up. <laughs> <laughs> so here is when he did an, a great job of putting down pavers in our backyard. And I, and I just did this handheld too. I just took fast video to get the idea of all the work that he was doing, but not take so much time in taking the video. Notice I had to rest a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> that was another one. And I actually put several of those together and made a whole little movie about this backyard project. So easy to do. Okay, where were the video feet? Then I did not show you yet. On the Samsung, where are the slow... Once again, if you just hold down on the shutter button, it turns into video mode and it just starts taking video. If you wanted that and when you let go, it stops. If you want the slow motion or the fast motion, that is over under more. And there is slow motion and you would tap it and it turns into a square. You always have to make sure that this timer is going to know that you're actually taking video, right? So many times so many times i think i'm taking video and then i tap it to stop it and it starts <laughs> so you really have to pay attention and different cameras do it different ways yeah yeah a little yes exactly now how do i get out of this slow motion <laughs> well i see there's a backup right there <laughs> you can always on android phones tap on your back button to get out of whatever option you had just done the fast is also called a lapse, hyperlapse. So it's under the more. And if you used, if you choose to use these all the time, you can put them down on your main line of buttons. Okay, back to the slides. Editing video with Google Photos. <laughs> you can trim from the beginning or the end. So like that video of our grandson on the swing, if I only like the end, I can go into Google Photos, edit, 
and trim all the way over to the spot and then save a, a copy. You can also, if your video is dark, you can use edit adjustments and brighten it up just like a photo. I think the best thing though is the stabilize and that I want to show you. So here is a video I took. And yes, I see the question about vertical or horizontal. It, it's either one. And I say, look how jerky that is. So I'm taking this video as I'm walking and every time I step, it's, it's jerking. I like this video, I want to make it better. I tap edit and here it's better to have the phone <laughs> vertical. And it, it has to download the video. And this went a lot faster. When I, and then you just tap a button that says stabilize and it does it. And it is amazing. So here is where you can trim beginning or end and you can crop adjust and filters all the stuff that you can do with a photo. But if what you want is to stabilize it's this little button right here that looks like a crooked solid square inside another one. Just tap it and it goes to work and it stabilizes the video. Now watch, you will not be able to see the jerks as I'm stepping. And I just think that's amazing. It also will not overwrite your original, so you get a saved copy. And you might be asking, I think somebody did ask, how do you find then in your library the one you just did? You know, well on, on the save a copy for the video, it shows up right at the top. I think the photos showed up in date order right next to their original. The way you find them is to go to search and choose recently added because they may have been taken years ago, but they were just created and added to your library today. So recently added will show me you know, that photo, for example, that we just created. Okay. And I think then this is the last one. I showed you one thing that only the apple could do. That was the holding on a person and removing it from the background. Here is one that only the Samsung camera can do. And it's called Director's View. And I don't, it's on the more menu, you'll see director's view, camera and more menu and director's view. And what it does is it uses both the front camera, the selfie camera and the rear camera at the same time. So you can have your face picture in picture over the video that you're taking. And here is a sample. So we were at this beautiful place along the Blue Ridge Parkway with the waterfall and and we don't we have the sound turned off for other reasons but if not you would hear me talking as well. I hear you talking enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that is director's view in Samsung. And lo and oh, no, I have review questions. Did you learn something? <laughs> okay, true or false, portrait mode will blur the background behind people. True, that's exactly what it does. And you can blur background later, but the portrait mode gets it better, gets it right around the people. Okay. The iPhone has a special feature that will lift a person from the rest of the photo. You must be using what app? Photoshop, Apple Photos, Google Photos, or Gallery? Apple Photos, the flowery looking multicolored icon. 
True or false, you can take video from photo mode by holding down on the shutter button. So easy. You know, I've been taking more video since I remembered that Me too. little tip. Me too. <laughs> you can smooth out a jerky video using features in A, Google Photos, B, Apple Photos, C, Samsung Gallery. Depends on what you mean by a jerky video. Hey, I hey, take hey, a, hey, take don't a video get of a jerk. <laughs> that is. I don't have any information about that. <laughs> That is a Google Photos video editing feature. Okay, I might even have a minute to deal with a question or two. I see some did come in. Okay. Is... Let's see, Mike Un Ungerman. Continuing problem that I have with Google Photos is poor ability to search and find specific albums by title. I have to sort either by last action date or alphabetically by name and then scroll down through hundreds of albums hmm well search for album name works for me let me just make sure that you're doing it the same way as i am so here is my complete library of a hundred thousand google photos if i tap on search I can search for, say, kayak. Now, here's the key, you know, do not press go, do not enter. If you press enter, then you are searching all 100,000 photos for photos with kayak in it. But if you notice right away, here's, I made a lot of kayak albums, and here is one from 2007, you know, so it's it's finding all my albums with the word kayak in the in the title and there is my 2007 kayak against cancer album okay anna marie i still get lots of duplicate photos i capture screenshots on my iphone they get sent to google photos but then i have duplicates how can i fix this i have reported that and it's just something to do you do you have an ipad as well i've i've had the exact same experience I take a screenshot with the Apple and somehow the way it goes to iCloud and to my iPad, it gets some tiny little change in there that makes it a different photo. Looks the same to us. I, all I can say is put that in a, what's it called? Reef. Review, not a review, <laughs> help and report Feature it. Request. <laughs> Feature what? request. Feature, Feature request. Feature request. Well, no, I would call that a bug. So I, I would put that in. The, it's under help and feedback. Feedback. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> feedback. You send <laughs> feedback. Tell them what's happening. <laughs> and the more reports they get of it someday. Okay. Should I take video in horizontal mm -hmm. or vertical? Okay. Are we? We're out of we're, here. We're done. Yeah, we're done. We'll answer the rest of the questions in the Q and A portion. Ron Brown with Tech for Senior: Safe Alternatives to a Credit Card. Let's see what this is all about. There are five potential issues seniors may face while using credit cards. The first is scams and fraud. Seniors may be more susceptible to scams and fraud, particularly if they are not familiar with technology or the internet. The second is difficulty managing finances. Some seniors may have difficulty managing their finances, which could lead to overspending and falling into debt. The third reason is higher risk of identity theft. Seniors may be at a higher risk of identity theft due to their personal information being more easily accessible. And the fourth reason is limited income. Some seniors may have limited income which could make it difficult for them to make repayment to credit cards. And the fifth and last is difficulty understanding credit card terms and conditions. Seniors may have more difficulty understanding the terms and conditions of credit cards, which could lead to confusion and mistakes. To help protect older adults in these issues, it is recommended that they keep their personal information safe monitor their credit reports, 
on a regular basis and be cautious of unsolicited offers for requests of personal information. It is also important for older adults to have a clear understanding of credit card terms and conditions before applying and using a credit card. Because we live in a cashless society, seniors often resort to debit cards. This can lead to disastrous consequences with fraud and theft. Let me explain the difference between a debit card and a credit card. Because we really live in a cashless society, the banks have created what we call a debit card. This allows you access to your own money in the bank you can get it through an electronic transaction. Therefore, it is your money you're using at the grocery store. So if Mr. Smith goes to the grocery store, he puts his debit card down and buys $200 worth of groceries, the amount in his bank now is zero. If he goes to buy $250 worth of groceries, he can't do that because he doesn't have $250 in his account. So it is a cash transaction that occurs from your bank to the grocery store, but it's cashless. And because of this, there is no fee to debit cards. There is no contract you sign with the bank and the debit cards are available to anyone, even if they have a horrible credit history and a very poor financial situation. Anyone can get a debit card because it simply offers you access to the money that you have in your existing account. Now we'll talk about credit cards in a moment, but we should now discuss the appropriate use of a debit card because this is a very important issue. Because the debit card is essentially giving cash out of your account, it's a cash transaction, there is no protection for you. It's just like if you were walking down the street and someone stole your wallet with $200 in it, then you wouldn't have $200 anymore. So there's no protection. You're, if someone steals your PIN number or your debit card number, they are simply going to empty your bank account out of your cash. And the bank is not going to compensate you for that. First, you should not use them to purchase gas. Gas skimming machines that are put on credit card devices on, these, on the gas um, dispensing machines are highly vulnerable to fraud. A recent report this week showed that investigators are seeing more credit card skimmers. They can steal your banking information, credit and credit or debit card numbers. Thieves plant all sorts of credit card skimmers, including businesses, gas stations, and in grocery stores. Recent reports showed UP, UPS workers arrested in a $1.3 million credit card fraud and identity scheme involving skimming. Costco found, Costco found five credit card skimmers in the Chicago area warehouses. Skimmers have been around for a long time, but thieves are getting smarter. In the old days, these machines were often very recognizable. In other words, they fit on top of a regular credit card machine. And they look exactly the same. You couldn't tell the difference. So they can be put on outside ATM terminals that your bank has. They can be put in Costco warehouses. The important thing to know, they are almost impossible to detect. So you need to be protected. And protection doesn't come by using your debit card because there is no protection with a debit card. If you are going to use this for a gas station purchase, go inside the store where there is control over the ATM machine and pay for it with a clerk at the desk. You should not use your debit card for any internet purchases. Keep it completely away from the internet and any online transaction. I'll talk about something better to use in a moment, but keep it away from the internet. There's a high degree of fraud and you don't want your number compromised because remember, it's cash out of your account and you're not going to get it back. So be very careful with that. Likewise, you should not use your debit card for purchases for travel. Remember, it's like prepaying with cash. Once you pay that out, you have no recourse to get it back again. So if you buy a cruise and the cruise ship goes under, not sinking, I mean, but if they go bankrupt, 
then then you're not going to get your money back if you're traveling around the world and the airline company goes bankrupt. And this has happened a lot in the last few years. Then you'll be stuck in some foreign country that you have to try and return yourself. So please don't use your debit card for any travel arrangements. Consider it a cash transaction. If you aren't comfortable with paying with cash, don't use your debit card. Senior citizens may be at higher risk of falling into debt due to a fixed income, decreased earning potential, and increased medical expenses. Additionally, some may be taken advantage of by predatory lending practices or may even not fully understand the terms and fees associated with credit card use. It is important for seniors to manage their finances carefully and seek assistance if they are struggling with debt. This week, the National Council on Aging published a report. There is a retirement crisis for millions of older adults because of growing credit card debt. Thanks to soaring inflation and mounting costs of food, housing, utilities, and more, retirees now outspend their annual income by more than $4,000 and are compensating with that for credit card debt. With few options to bridge the gap, many older adults have little choice but to use their credit cards to finance this debt. In fact, Forbes recently reported that 41% of households headed by someone between the ages of 65 and 74 carry credit card debt, up from 27% in 1989. So it's important for you to remember that unlike a debit card where you're using your own money, with a credit card, you are using someone else's money. In other words, you're using credit. Because of that, you have to sign a contract with a company. In other words, you're going to be signing on the dotted line to agree to the terms of that contract. Now, most people who sign that form don't actually read the contract, but it usually is 30, 40 pages long. Out of all those pages in the contract, they all are in favor of the credit card company. You would not believe all the terms and conditions that we agree to. But there is one paragraph in all those contracts that works in your favor, and that is fraud protection. And that is the key issue between using a credit card and a debit card. Using a credit card, you are protected against fraud. And that is a big feature. And that's why for online secure transactions, a credit card is the preferred method. But I'm going to show you something that works just as well and you won't have to get a credit card. Let me explain how this works. So if you do not have a credit card and you're worried about using your debit card as for an online transaction, let me talk about two alternatives for you. The first is a prepaid card. You can purchase these at any grocery store, usually gas station. Uh, or in Canada, we have them as well. These are called prepaid cards and they're made either by Visa or MasterCard. You can pick these up, usually right at the till when you're checking out buying your groceries. So what are these cards? Well, these are prepaid cards that you can purchase. Now the cost of these cards varies from $2 to usually they're under $10. And that's the administrative fee of setting the cards up. And then when you check out, the teller will ask you, how much do you want to put on the card? And there you can take your debit card and you do a transaction from your debit card and it loads the prepaid card. So there is no link between the, the prepaid card and your debit card. In fact, there's no identifier on these cards. These cards have no names or any identifier to your personal information. So you then take this home and you can use this now wherever credit cards are used. So remember, if you put $200 on the card, that's all you have. Now, when you go back next week to buy more groceries, if you have more shopping to do, you can just add further two or $300 onto the card and there is no cost to that. So there is a cost initially to purchase the card, which is the administrative setup fee. Now there's one other fee associated with these cards, is there is a monthly charge of usually 2% of the balance on the card. 
So this is not a lot of money if you're going to use the card on a short-term basis, which I would recommend. These cards are not meant for you to load a bunch of money on and leave them for two or three years, because that 2% each month is going to chew away at the balance. But if it, in October, if you're looking at buying some Christmas uh, gifts and things like that, then you can simply purchase the card, load it up each time you go grocery shopping, and then do some online purchases with total protection. There's no link between any information on that card. In fact, the MasterCard or Visa, whoever sponsors the card, has no idea who you are. It's a cash transaction to load that at the till when you're checking out from the grocery store. The second card that is a great card that I've used for many years is the Amazon gift cards. So who doesn't shop at Amazon? The Amazon gift cards are a great way to do online shopping. Again, you purchase these in the grocery store usually, and you can take them to the till when you're checking out, and you'll just, uh, you could pay for them uh, with a credit card if you want, but you could use a debit card as well. And then you take your gift card home with you, and it acts just like a credit card, but it only works with Amazon. There's no fees to purchase it, and there are no monthly fees. So it's uh, you can just take the card and apply it onto your uh, onto your Amazon account. This is a very secure way of doing online transactions on Amazon. And again, there's no identifying uh, number that relates you to your, your, your debit card or any personal information. Just two options that you have if you're worried about using your debit card for online transactions. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Alternatives to a credit card. Hopefully this video will help you stay safe when doing your internet purchases. Be sure to appreciate the like and subscribe. And until we see you again, have a great day.